There are many scientific studies that show prescription drugs are dangerous, correct? Mm, that's correct. What about a drug for weight loss that was out a few years ago, Fenfen? Yes, Fenfen was a combination of two drugs. They were both amphetamines. One was a methamphetamine product, the fenfluramine. They added three fluoride ions to a mm -hmm. basically a methamphetamine drug. And then they had another uh, amphetamine-like drug too. And, and that combination was extremely potent in just stopping your appetite. So you okay. didn't have any appetite at all, and you lost weight. When you're starving, you lose weight. But it also is very hyperactive. I mean, you're really buzzing. You can't mm -hmm. sit still, can't sleep either. <laughs> but your metabolism just speeds up like crazy, so you lose weight faster that way too. And it was highly effective. The problem is that they, the drug industry knew that fenfluramine, mm -hmm. uh, the one that was the trifluorinated compound, caused brain damage in monkeys. Uh, in 1975, they did a study, they published a study that showed uh, the brain uh, of a monkey that 18 months earlier had received four doses, just four doses of fenfluramine. Mm -hmm. They waited, I think it was 17 months, and they sacrificed the monkey, looked at the brain, and it had eliminated all the serotonin nerves virtually. There were hardly any serotonin nerves left in that monkey's brain. It destroyed serotonin nerves, and, and that was known to be true. They repeated that study. It destroys serotonin nerves, fenfluramine. Well, 20 years later, they put it in a compound called Fenfen, got it to weight loss clinics that just did just burgeoned oh, across yes. the whole United States because it was so effective in melting pounds off. They knew it caused brain damage in monkeys, and it was likely to cause brain damage in humans. They chose to use it anyway because they could get away with it. You do not do brain biopsies in humans, and that's the only way you can tell, okay. improve brain damage in anybody is if it causes, if, if you biopsy the brain. Uh, so they used it anyway, uh, and after a few years, it caused heart damage and lung damage, and there were deaths right. and serious heart problems. So now it's banned. It's a banned drug because it, they could prove that it causes harm. I bet you all, most of those women, mostly women, use, losing weight, and it was highly effective for weight loss. Mm -hmm. But when they quit it, oh, sure. the weight came back because it didn't teach them anything about uh, eating habits or exercise or anything like that. It was just a quick drug-induced anorexia, appetite suppression, and hyperactivity-inducing sleep loss type of drug. And it lost, you lose weight quick, but it doesn't stay off. So <clears throat> another reason to question the, the integrity of the drug yes. industry to do something like that. You know? They got away with it, I mean, they as did. far as the, the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a study, early study, where they gave drugs to uh, chickens Mm -hmm. uh, they were amphetamine type drugs, or, or they were drugs that depleted serotonin from the brain and also destroyed serotonin nerves. There, there are certain research drugs mm -hmm. that can actually destroy the serotonin nerves selectively. They did that in these chickens. The chickens never slept again the rest of their lives. They gave the serotonin destroying drug and, and they never slept again. They could not fall asleep. Serotonin is really important for it sleep. It sounds like it, yeah. yes. So these chickens were awake the rest of their lives. I'm sure their lives were shortened. So when you destroy serotonin nerves, you're messing with a lot of things. But why does that suppress appetite? Well, actually, uh, if you destroy serotonin nerves, you have a huge appetite. I would think. Yeah, when you block serotonin nerves. So, um, uh, but amphetamines uh, work both as a serotonin reuptake pump inhibitor and, and a destroying serotonin nerves and a dopamine reuptake pump inhibitor which uh, overstimulates the dopamine system which also suppresses appetite. So it has more than one mechanism of action. But uh, when we're lacking in serotonin, our brain says you need to eat. Mm -hmm. The only way to increase your serotonin <laughs> is to eat. Uh, right. You try to eat meat mm -hmm. which has serotonin in it. But you're always hungry when your serotonin uh, is depleted, your serotonin nerve system is depleted, or it's being blocked. And that's the explanation for the massive obesity that happens with the Zyprexa and the, and the Respiradol and all those antipsychotics cause obesity and ultimately diabetes in huge numbers of patients. And it's blocking the serotonin, so you're famished. You, mm -hmm. you wanna, because when you, when you eat, you get some relief. Uh, uh, sh sugar, uh, eat, uh, this is complicated and convoluted, but uh, when we eat uh, sweet uh, sugar uh, or carbohydrates, there's a, uh, the insulin goes up, insulin just drops the 
uh, the level of all the amino acids except tryptophan. So all of a sudden there's relatively more tryptophan in the bloodstream than the other amino acids which compete uh, in the uh, entry of the tryptophan okay. into the brain. So you get a relatively more tryptophan into the brain cells and you get this serotonin surge mm -hmm. and then your appetite's better. Okay. Uh, so high sugar food will actually raise your serotonin in the brain temporarily. Okay. If you block that, uh, so so uh, so then you stop eating because your serotonin uh, is uh, raised again uh, temporarily, but it doesn't last for long. It's not like taking tryptophan and raising your serotonin level that way, which also suppresses appetite. 5-HTP is a good treatment for appetite suppression. All right. Well, thank yeah. you, Dr. Coles. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're welcome. Yeah.